there. My name is Sabra. I'm um have a little bit of a story to tell you. Um, this is my story. And it has a happy ending. Um and I want to share it with you. I feel it's really important. Um, so I'm going to try and get it done in the amount of time that I'm, well, I have a goal time. <laughs> um, so obviously, um, um, you're here because you have questions or you've heard about people who've had very serious health issues um, that have gotten better. And I am one of those people. I'm 39 years old. I was born into this world with what I call a dancing spirit. Um, was always dancing, always near the music. Um, very symbiotic with movement and music and so always healthy never got sick you know the stuff that people get kids will sometimes get um and i did however have a handful of migraines um under the age of nine and then um Again, uh, another about, I would say, a handful up until they went up about my 14th year. And they were quite bad. I hadn't had, um, you know, any pain pills or any pain relievers. Um, or I was raised, basically, we were raised to have a, to be wary and have sort of a healthy respect for what the these medications could do. So it wasn't until I was 14 that I had this terrible migraine. I remember um, my parent giving me three Tylenol and it just knocked me out, you know, slept for hours and hours and hours. Um, and then, uh, you know, Within a year, they were so bad, the migraines were so bad that um, they couldn't tell, the doctors couldn't tell where one left off and the next one began, and essentially ended up having what they, like, say, for three and a half months was a migraine. And, of course, they had me on blood vessel regulation stuff and, you know, did variation of medications. And then, of course, whatever pain medication that would work. Um, they didn't really have migraine pain medication at the time. Um, but that was basically my introduction to the world of, uh, sort of the beginning of the world of pain. Um, I also had some sort of, some aches and things, some muscle, you know, discomfort and joint stuff. I had bruises that would appear around my joints, particularly my knees. Um, I was tested for all kinds of autoimmunity things and autoimmunity-like things and, and um, uh, you know, basically the, during that one year, I went to, I was trying to figure out where all these, these migraines came from. I went to 32 doctors in one year. I felt, I began to feel as if I lived in a doctor's office. And you know, they did the best they could, the best that they knew. Um, they, you know, however, it was very much like, you know, how things are if you go, and, and there's very good chiropractors, you know, I love you guys. Um, however, if you go to the chiropractor, the chiropractor says, oh, well, it's because you need adjustments. And if you go to the physical therapist, physical therapist says, well, it's because you need physical therapy. And if I went to the neurologist, he said, well, why are you reading this book? Because I would carry a book with me that I'd read. Well, you look like 
a stressed out person, I think you should go to the psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist would say, oh, maybe these are seizures and you should, you know. Okay, so basically, um, yeah, and then you go to this doctor and he says, oh, you have TMJ. And I go to the dentist. The dentist says, no, you don't have TMJ, but maybe you have something like this. And um, within all of that, I don't think there was much helpful, except that I learned, A, doctors don't really know very much about chronic situations, B, I knew my body better than anybody, and C, um, you know, they were very limited to their profession. However, the endocrinologist, yes, I went to an endocrinologist too, did discover something very interesting. He discovered on top of my very low blood pressure that I always had had, my blood pressure dropped 30 points from laying down to standing up, which could account for a lot of the dizziness and the fainty feeling that I had a lot of the time. Uh, and of course, anytime stress would happen and, you know, the migraines would get triggered and whatever. And so then my, and then my blood pressure would drop even more and, and that caused, of course, some anxiety. However, really trying to manage the migraines was the big point. Um, and then I started to develop some other pains, very, a lot of pain in my knees that would wake me up at night. And it would be like what people, older people, elderly people would describe like, like rheumatoid arthritis or like, art, like serious. And I would think, I can't even tell people that because I'm a, I'm a kid basically. Like no one's going to believe that. And then I would, but I would wake up in the middle of the night kind of moaning from this pain and I would stumble into the bathroom and try and run hot water over my knees. My mom would come in and wonder what's going on in the middle of the night, you know, and that would help. <laughs> but I always slept terrible, terrible. I, I never seemed to get what other people would get out of sleep. I would wake up, I don't know, I, I just, if, I never wanted to go to sleep because I never felt good. I could never get sleepy. And then on top of it, it was never this refreshed thing that other people seemed to experience. Um, and instead, I, as the pain got worse, as I got older, um, the pain would be bad in my dreams and I would have nightmares about being in pain. So time goes on and uh, basically aches and pains and joints and this and that, and I've learned my own triggers for migraines. I've weaned myself off of the stuff the doctor's given me and I'm managing that. However, I'm having a lot of joint pain and muscle pain and I feel fatigued. And then um, in a motorcycle accident, not our fault, and um, within two years in a car accident. And uh, it was a hit and run. And essentially they both were. And um, in the car accident, I, you know, the door had to be torn off um, of the car to get me out. Um, and I was in extraordinary pain. Uh, they put me on a morphine drip. They thought I was having some sort of cardiac event um, because the pain was so bad that my heart it, it couldn't manage and um, you know um, basically um, in, at that point you know I mean went first went to to the proper practitioners and everything to try and get better and to recuperate from the situations and um, of course then got the diagnosis of fibromyalgia and chronic myofascial pain syndrome. Um, I also had a diagnosis of asthma at the time, had restless legs, uh, 
like multiple chemical sensitivities, environmental sensitivities. Um, trying to remember all of the diagnoses. I have both classic and c common migraines and all their variations. Um, I can't even remember all of the diagnoses at the time. All of them. And uh, then I try, I seem to get stronger and a little better and to recover, but I was still dealing with muscle pain, the migraines pretty severely. And so go forward a few years. Um, I'm having some fatigue. I finally see a doctor because my pain levels have now gotten to the point whereas one of the things that I have yet to mention is extraordinarily painful menstrual cycles. And one of the things I had been told is that, you know, they're so bad, they were so bad that, you know, basically around the time that I was 20, the doctor said, you know, hysterectomy, that's just the best thing. Um, and I didn't. I, of course, I still tried to work it like I do everything, tried to manage with my diet and nutrition and every new supplement and believe me, I learned everything. And anybody who knows me can tell you that when I learn something, I learn it. And when I am faced with something, I'm one of these people that if I can identify it, then I can problem solve it. And so I had done that. Oh boy, fibromyalgia, I knew that inside out. Oh, migraines, there are nobody that knows more about migraines than me. How they work, what's happening, at what stage do you do this, and what natural remedies can you do, and when do you put your hands under hot water, and when do you put them under cold water, and muscle pain, and how to handle all of these things. And, um, you know, that's basically what you are learning and to deal with constantly. And when you have so many things, that's all you're doing, right? Your life just, that's what it becomes. And so then, basically, I started to have um, even more symptoms. Only these became neurological. Uh, pain in nature and I started to have some neurodegenerative types of looking things I was, had when I was younger they had presumed that I may have had some slight stroke or something when I hadn't during one of the migraines because my left side had become so unable and um, then um, I started to develop, in my mid-twenties, started to develop uh, these neurological issues and neurological pain. And the sort of preliminary diagnosis or presumption was some kind of an MS. Um, and I became bedridden uh, in my late twenties. And, um, yeah, and when I say bedridden, um, I laid in bed, um, I, there was a TV that was across the room and a diagonal. I could see that. I could see if I moved my eyes like a foot and a half to the right, if the window was up. And then I could see out the window, if the curtain was pulled back, I could see into a bush and um, there was a bird that would visit in the bush. And I could see on my laptop, which was next to the bed, and I could see when the bedroom door was open, I could see down the hall a few feet, the end of a wall, to the end, which was a wall. And um, 
That was it. I took three steps to the bathroom, the toilet, with help. And with help, could stand in front of the sink and wash my hands. And, and then three steps back. Food had to be left for me within arm reach and water. Um, and I was like that for um, most of eight years. That seems very surreal. Seems like a very sad story to me. Yeah. Um, basically, what happened is I felt that there were things at the house there that where I was at that were making me worse. So I um, sort of did what I could. I, I begged um, to get out of there. I moved in temporarily to a hotel and then into a smaller place that I hoped that I could manage. Um, I liked, at the time I stopped calling myself bedridden. Um, although if I'm honest, um, uh, that's where I lived. Um, it's just now when I walked to the bathroom, I walked several steps and I walked it by myself. However, I couldn't comb my hair most days, and I couldn't wash my face most days, and the neurological pain um, was is unbelievable. And this is what I would tell a doctor: there is. Um, it is so difficult to comprehend this uh, as if I was on fire and sweating but cold and frozen at the same time and it over my entire body and that um, I could not imagine my leg being sawed off being more painful. I could not imagine it. I'm there for a whole hours, days where I would just be writhing in pain for hours and hours and hours. And this was with the pain medications that the doctors would give me. And I would be have something that was in a patch. And for those of you who know, uh, it's one of the most potent pain relievers they have and one of the most powerful. I also had to take stuff because what would help the nerve pain wouldn't help the joint pain. And I never wanted to take more because I didn't like them and I didn't want to go down that road in that cycle. So I took as little as possible. And then I would take a little bit more, you know? And and then I had to have drops, liquid for emergencies basically so that if I thought that I had to go to the ER to the emergency room then um, I would take this other thing or if I like it was in like um, um, you know if I was like out in public and I was so struck with pain that I was gonna pass out and you know it's for emergencies and um, yeah and then of course I had to have something for the migraines and that's different and then something for sleep and that's different and then for these times with the, what I would call the torturous nerve sensations and it would be this ticklish on fire thing 
um, that would happen in my spine. And it's a, I, I can't, it's indescribable. Yeah. And, um, I was trying to be functioning. And I remember the doctor, you know, kind of like chastising me a little bit for taking so little of so many things, of these things. And he was saying to me, you know, I'm not trying to just get you into your living room. I'm trying to get you out of your house. I'm trying to get you, you know past the mailbox because I was so proud of myself you know after all of these years yeah I don't just see across the room to the TV I can walk myself and to the mailbox and back every so many weeks and um, I was grateful for that and um, then um, some time went by and I basically was about the same and um, and during that period of time while before I had moved I was diagnosed with uh, neurodegenerative late stage Lyme disease because when you have something for 20 years and it's misdiagnosed for 20 some odd years and um, well becomes late stage, you know, generally. So, yeah. And it was affecting my, you know, nervous system, obviously. So, um, very much like MS, maybe the same, who knows. What I know is, is that My situation is so bad that one of the reasons I've decided to share this video is because I simply cannot keep it to myself any longer. A, because people are suffering. And can be helped now. B, because I Them, obviously something miraculous has changed and what happened was that in the midst of me thinking hey I'm gonna have a better quality high functioning life and I learned this medication routine and we've got me on super strong stuff and and I'm learning how to handle the deal with it and um, you know, I'll do this, and what happened is basically the climate in the medical field changed for reasons that it best left to others to explain, and suddenly, um, doctors could not, um, pain management doctors could not feel as if they were able to give uh, pain relievers medications to people with chronic pain. In fact, I was told outright that unless I had something on an x-ray of obvious structural damage or I had cancer, the only thing that could be given to me was epidurals epidurals for migraines and pain and I mean it just and that's what they're giving and every two weeks for a thousand dollars that's what you could get and I knew that I you know here I was down to nothing I lost my pain management doctors um, as uh, many people with chronic pain did 
Um, and basically, you know, they, it became that unless they could define it in legal terms, they, they, I could not be treated. Um, and so I knew that I was not going to make it very far without some kind of pain relief. And, um, uh, of course, be, you know, I had heard of, and of cannabis being used. And what happened is I knew that I could not manage I was not going to choose to live in that pain. It's not a living, you know? The, uh, or the suffering life. So I started to um, get my affairs in order, basically, to, as people will say, um, in case we didn't find me a doctor that would help me. And so, um, this was the plan. Let's get Sabra stoned on cannabis so that she, we're going to try and keep her basically sedated. It says, you know, this is like me and my c c close, very close friend. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Okay. So that hopefully I won't want to like um, execute myself out of pain, um, and so we're gonna do that till we can find a doctor to treat you. So I got my medical marijuana card. I learned. Um, well, my goodness, there's three different kinds of cannabis, and oh, well, the sativas. This is for mental clarity and con helps people with with the PTSD and with uh, anxiety and ADHD and a uh, myriad of other things. And there's people with, and there's indicas and this helps people with, or like relax your muscles and people with muscle pain and joint pain and um, yeah. And then of course I didn't learn about hemp because I collect antique textiles and linens and my best sheets are the hemp linen sheets let me tell you and 100 years old and completely intact and I got sheets that are cotton three years old I can see through them pilling threadbare anyhow <laughs> yeah so I started to take it and um and then I started to learn that there were um, different ways that you could take it, just like other herbs. And there were tinctures that could be made, and there were, you can have it in your food, and that would help it last, the effects last longer. But basically I was looking at it as a pain reliever, and that's what everybody, you know, that I knew, everybody was telling, you know, that that's how you use it, is as a pain reliever. And... So I started looking it up because I started feeling, after so many weeks of using it, that um, I felt something different happening in there. And even though I was living, like breaking down pieces of medications, trying to make it last longer till I could get to the doctor, but I noticed that I could take less and less, and I was cool with that. And then, um, I noticed that I was, there was a change, there was a major shift and a major change happening. Yeah. It was like, for me, the first thing that I noticed was not, and I'm very sensitive to, you know, like, probably things that maybe a lot of people aren't sensitive to, or maybe aware, I should say, and 
for, for myself, the first thing I felt that was different was me. I felt like I was becoming realigned with myself again. It's like something indefinable was being healed, like it was out, it was out here. It was way out here, and it was healing, and I could feel it, and there was something, there was something profound happening, and I, I just, I couldn't tell, and I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm texting people, I feel like I'm having, like, some sort of spirit, spiritual personality, he, something, something's happening, like, there's something going on there, okay, well, you know, that sounds, to some people, and, um, I, I was just glad to start to feel more clarified and it, uh, feel my authentic identity come back. Um, and so, then a few more weeks went by and I realized I was just doing things and I didn't realize I was doing them until I looked back and I just was getting out of bed. And I was just getting dressed, and I was just taking a shower, and I was just taking a walk. And it was less and less of pain medications, however, the pain was still there, the nerve pain was still bad, but the joint pain and the muscle pain, that that wasn't so bad. And the fatigue, that, that wasn't so bad. And then I, I would say that, I mean, I can say that looking back, but the first significant difference that I recognized at the time, other than, hey, it just seems like it's a little bit easier today. I thought maybe I was sleeping better. That's what I thought it was. Like, well, maybe this is helping me sleep a little bit better. And that's why I can get out of bed and, like, get dressed easier. And But I remember it was because I went to um, one of the doctors. And um, they took my blood pressure, which was always something ridiculous and just above fainting. Something like, you know, 90 or 60 or something. And, um... It wasn't. It was like 120 over 80. And I said, there's something wrong. It's never that. It's It hasn't... It, it was never that in my whole life. And I said, there's got to be something wrong with your like, cuff or you need to change the batteries or we need to do this like the manual way or something. And then a month later, I went to a different... I was in a different doctor's office and they took my blood pressure, and it was once again a normal number. And I thought, this is odd. Huh. And then, in the next month, I had a special occasion coming up. And I thought, well, I don't know what's going to happen to me at the end of this month. I don't know if I'm even going to be around. So I'm going to go. And it was easy. Well, I mean easier. And it felt normal. And I felt normal. And I know you know what the... I know, I know that you know how it feels to do things and to feel so out of touch and out of sync with healthy activities, you know. And, um, yeah. And then I kept going. And now it's been not even a year. And I continue to get better, and I continue to get better, and I will continue to get better. And I can say to you honestly that never in my life 
Did I ever think this was possible? And that's the amazing thing about uh, cannabis and what I've learned about it and things that you should research and look up. Rick Simpson Oil or RSO. Uh, his film is called Run from the Cure. And in it he addresses um, cannabis and its effect on cancer. And you want to also look up cannabinoids and the cannabinoids and the endocannabinoidal system, which is in us. Because in all of the world, with all of those wonderful herbs and supplements and treatments and everything that we have, there is nothing that does what this does. Now, I'm the more knowledgeable about the plant. I hope to learn a lot more. However, what I know is that it heals you. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what you call it. The disease doesn't call itself cancer. The disease doesn't call itself neurodegenerative late stage Lyme disease. It's just a malfunction. And the cannabis heals your body. I don't, I avoid the word cure because it's just healing you with whatever you have. And I've known people who have hormonal issues that are going through terrible menopause that use it, no problems, that are um, have had endometriosis that have no problems, that have cancer that were stage four, oh, you have four weeks to live cancer completely gone people with autism children with autism and um, how could I keep this and how could I keep my story quiet when this is it and the reason I tell you and it's um, a challenge for me to share it with you because it feels very personal to me It feels like my, my private business. Um, however, now my story is your story. I want it to be your story. And I know what it's like to have something long term. And I know what it's like to be so bad that everybody's given up on you. And the only person left is for you to give up on yourself. I want to say to you that feeling better it's worth it it's worth it even if you felt better for a month that quality of life is amazing let me tell you I'm dancing I'm doing dancing I'm doing everything everything that I laid in bed for all those years and thought of. And I know there are people that are on their couches and raising their children from their pillow and that are um, can hardly think. And I can tell you in every way that that there has been a trauma or a tragedy or a challenge, whether that was mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, psychological, it has enacted healing on every part of me. And um, how can I not share that? So there you go. That's my truth. That's my part of my story. And, um, I want you to know, you can do it, it can be done, learn it, and discover what works for you. Give it a little bit of time.
You were meant to be better. One of the reasons that was important for me to share is that because I can no longer, as I said, really keep it a secret. Um, I had a, um, Uh, someone that I uh, have worked with and they said hadn't seen me for a while and said uh, Sabra what are you doing differently and of course um, I said um, herbs yeah but no well, what are you doing differently and I was like trying to be discreet because there were other people nearby and I'm like yeah um, it will like it, it certain like was it a combination of her like you look amazing like what what's going on like you're it's completely uh, this is an unbelievable change and he was like yeah okay well actually you know and um it's cannabis and um are you kidding what well, the reason that I share this story is because I've seen it and heard it over and over and over and over again and I know that my story is profound it's profound to those people who have known who have seen it with their eyes you know for myself it's like uh, a miracle that I thought that I had to wait for but I don't believe that anymore and all I believe is that now I have the know I have this knowledge and that all it is is the difference between knowledge not having it and having it. And now you have the option just like I did. And a lot of people are touting it as, you know, at least for medical marijuana is that it's a pain reliever. I'll tell you something. Um, that's, it's so little of what it does. Hopefully it's pain relieving. Good. You should be out of pain. But at the same time, it can heal you. Yeah. So, I hope it helps. I hope it helps you. I mean, I know it will help you. I know it will. Learn it. Learn how to get it. Like to utilize it. Learn how to get it into your body is what I mean. You know? Do what needs to be done. And don't say, well maybe one day. Or when I have enough. Or when so and so's out of the house. Or... Uh, I'm sorry, but it's not in my state. None of those are, va are valid. This is your life. Fight for it like it was your child's life. That's what I want to tell you. And I don't care how late stage someone has told you. If you're looking at this, then there is fight left in you. And if there is fight left in you, you have enough spirit to get better. Okay. I don't want you to suffer any longer, any moment longer than necessary. If I haven't covered anything, let me know. It's a lot. <laughs> Get better.